So let's fly over the Khatsabanda TVET college campuses located in Mpumalanga. But let's set the scene. Uh, the way I understand it is you've got at your top left hand side, you've got the great owl of Limpopo. And then if you look at your top right hand side, you can see the harbour of Maputo and Mozambique with Eswatini, the old Swaziland, just below Mozambique. And then you run further down to KZN and the bottom you can see those gorgeous Lesotho mountains. But the route I want to take is flying down and through the Free State because I think that gives you a great sight of the green heartland of Mpumalanga. You can see the Vol River coming from the Vol Dam which is right ahead of you and we're going to fly right over it now. You can see Gauteng with Johannesburg and Pretoria to your top left. And what I want you to watch out for as we fly over the Vol Dam are these white pockmarks in Mpumalanga because the white pockmarks are ash dumps and where there's an ash dump there's been a burning of coal so you'll see big black coal mines and then you'll see the coal power stations pouring out pollution and smoke and powering the country. That particular one there is the Grootvle power station but you're going to see as we do this that there's many. Also notice the extensive commercial maize farming there's also sugar beans and soya beans and sunflower growing over here. So let's check out the Balfour campus. Now, initially, I was disappointed. You've got to understand that Khatsabanda has got a great reputation. It really is a good college. And all I could find was this little set of buildings located in Wur in Lar School Balfour couldn't believe it you know and uh, as I did some research I started to find out that actually they're building this big new campus right next door so I'm going to pull out so I can show you that it's actually started this has been a long time coming but definitely in the last year they've started to do the foundations for the campus which I'm really excited about and you can do office administration you can do civil engineering construction you can do a management assistant HR management civil engineering and electrical engineering and when I say good college, I mean it. They've won all sorts of national awards for being one of the best TVETs in the country. They've been awarded one of the centers of specialization for mill writing. They're doing all sorts of innovative curriculum work and all sorts of IT and computer science kind of innovations as well. Please look out for the Groot Dry Dam near Standerton, right at the bottom there, because it's going to be key to our story as we kind of move forward. We're now flying into the Evander campus, but you'll notice that instead of going to the town of Evander, we're firstly going to hone in on Secunda and the massive plant that's there. Now, Secunda basically converts coal into petroleum oil and diesel and also fertilizer and explosives. It's called Secunda because it's Secund, second. The first big one was at Sasselberg. And what happened was when they built this, they built a white town, which was called Secunda, which we're going to pull out now and check out. But they also built a black town called Emba Lengle, which means pretty flower. And you can pretty much assume that the white apartheid government Try to call it something which it isn't. I mean, we have a racist situation over here. And you'll see that Sukunda is green. It was designed to create separate little suburbs, each contained in their own right. The architect's very proud of their innovative design, even though you're in a place which is basically poisoning you with pollution. And what you can see is the Ivanda town also looks white. And that's because it is white. It's a white mining town. They also discovered gold here in the 1950s. And they built this white town over here. And stretching way out in the distance, you'll have seen a place called Liandar, which is the black township associated with Ivanda. But racist history aside, this campus now serves all our people. Uh, it offers business studies and engineering programs. And it also offers a distance program in uh, human resources done with an entrepreneurial organization called Student Hub. And as we pull right out over all the polluted ash dumps and the attempt to reclaim some of the land, 
Just to note that Student Hub basically offers a service where they'll convert your programs into an online setup in exchange for some kind of revenue share, which basically means they're going to get a percentage of the revenue of the TVET college in exchange for converting some of the qualifications into online mode. But what I want to do now is make some sense of this astonishing apocalyptic Mpumalanga terrain. You can see a coal mine stretching in front of you there at the bottom. You can see the town of Creel on your bottom right. And then you can see the power station Creel with its enormous ash dumps. And below the ash dumps you can see those kinds of furrows. And what they're trying to do there is they're setting up a land reclamation kind of zone. Where after they've dumped their waste there they try and restore the area. Hopefully to plant crops. In fact, actually, Krill has started to plant soya beans in those kinds of areas, and they're claiming that they've been quite successful with those land rehabilitation programs. If you look to your bottom, you can see another power station. That's Mutler Power Station. And then we begin to realize that Khatsabanda is partly such a good TVET college because it's surrounded by all these industries who desperately need to show community engagement, community support and community investment. But we have to ask at what cost to the environment and to our future world. And as TVET colleges, we have to engage with the issue of environmental sustainability, whilst at the same time recognizing that most of our students are desperately looking for work. And I'd like to heighten the question and the tension by shifting from that apocalyptic mining landscape and slowly but surely travel through to the Ermelo campus, but via the Great Lake district of Mpumalanga. Now you'll start to notice that there are these little inland lakes with no noticeable rivers going inside and out of them. And it's from these lakes and from this area that four of our major rivers actually all flow out from. You've got the Val, the Kamati, the Olifants and the Osutu River all starting here and then flowing out into the rest of the country with a rich diversity of bird life. Uh, there's flamingos over here. And in fact, at the end of apartheid, what happened was a number of San or Bushman people suddenly came out. Their account was that they'd kind of been in hiding. So there's a whole rich hidden history to this area, which we're slowly starting to unpack again. Now we're flying to the Ermelo campus and you'll notice inevitably that it's located right by a power station in this case, the Camden Power Station. Notice the railway aligned with the coal mine, ferrying the coal in a loop all the way through to the power station. Let's take a look at this Ermola campus. Now, the first thing I'd like to mention is the fact that it's an excellent campus. It's in a really good zone in Ermola. There's all sorts of good infrastructure around it. And it really offers a whole range of the business and engineering qualifications. So you can do office administration and finance, economics and accounting. You can do marketing. You can do civil engineering, electrical infrastructure, construction. You can see there's a whole bunch of excellent workshops and places to stay. You can do mechanical engineering, civil engineering, electrical engineering, financial management and marketing management. But one of the things that starts to happen to you when you're continually doing these kind of Google Earth videos is you start to see things. Now you've heard me talk about some strange patterns like the Isle of Limpopo. But in this particular case, what I want you to do is I want you to look very carefully at this empty piece of ground which I'm slowly flying over. And what I noticed as I was kind of initially flying over it, that there was like this weird settlement. There were like grids of roads and land. It turns out that that's the Nyebe settlement. It was like a District 6. It was a mixed race suburb. And what happened was it was destroyed and razed by the apartheid government. And all the people were forced to shift across to the township, which is located on the other side of Ermelo. And that's why it's fitting that this college is named after a very powerful political activist who fought for farming rights in the area all the way from the 1940s and 50s, who was involved with Nelson Mandela in the struggle and went on trial with Nelson Mandela, 
a period from 1956 to 61, I think it was. So now we've shifted across, we've been moving east, and we're now very close to Swaziland. And we've moved to the Sibanesefu campus in Umpuluzi. I kind of know it as the Glenmore area. And it is hauntingly beautiful, especially after the chaos and the destruction and the powerful industrial energy of the earlier areas we visited. Now, this campus was incorporated into Khatsabanda around about 2005, and it's a deeply rural campus. So when the students have struggled here, there have been soup kitchens and all sorts of interventions. I've heard good things from student reports. They've spoken strongly about an entrepreneurial spirit in the area. And it offers all the same programs that the other campuses offer. So all the business programs and all the engineering programs that I've mentioned are offered here as well. And I've gone through the financial reports over the last number of years. And this campus performs pretty much as well as the other campuses do. Standerton, the campus we'll go to just now, is the best campus. But this campus is doing well. There's all sorts of sports activities going on in this TVET college. They often win their events. So on the whole, it's got a really good feel to it. Now let's pull back and try and orient ourselves because we've been doing a lot of traveling. Now to your left is Swaziland, behind you is Barberton, and right below you are the Konjwa Mountains. Some of the most ancient mountains in the world, they're 3.6 billion years old. And also behind you is the Eklanzeni Tivet Colleges. And now we're going to travel in a southward direction, and we're going to move all the way through to a place unbelievably called Perdekop which means Horse Hill. And inevitably, we're going to go past a power station. I think this is actually Majuba in front of us, an enormous power station. And the place we're going to is so named because of that hill there. Uh, farmers found out that if they got their horses to the top of the hill when there was terrible horse sickness in the area, that the horses were actually protected. Now, this campus we're going to used to be La School Père de Cop, and then around about 1990, the whole demographic of this place had changed, so it closed down. They tried to make it a secondary school, like an agricultural school. That didn't work either. And finally, what happened was it was shifted into a college after extensive negotiations. Evidently, David Mabuza got involved and there was negotiations with Khartzabanda and this place was converted to a college campus. And you can see from the area that it offers primary agriculture. It also does office administration. And just very recently, it started to do a management assistant program, which started in 2019. But you can tell from the area it's located in, it's got extensive agricultural lands where the students can work at primary agriculture and actually learn the skills rather than just practice in the classroom. So let's do one more pull out to visit our final campus, Standarten. And if you look carefully, we're kind of tracking a line now between the free state in the distance over there. And that means you should be able to see the Vol River running across. And you'll see the Groot Dry Dam, named after all the corners that it has. You're going to see the inevitable power station. In this case, it's Tatuka. And now we're moving into what is one of the premier campuses in South Africa. So if you need skills training, if you're unemployed, you can do it here. If you need high-level corporate training, you can do it here. If you're in a situation where you're doing marketing, well, then it's got simulation shops. If you're doing hospitality, well, it's got restaurants, excellent kitchens. If you're studying to be a secretary, there's like a practicum room where you can do that as well. If you're doing electrical work, you've got an electricity workshop, which works with renewable energy. If you're doing mechanical engineering, you've got the mechanical workshop, which is doing welding. So you really have a premier institution over here. And to also say, this is the campus that has got the center of specialization to be a Mulwright. Now, to be honest, I didn't really know what a Mulwright was before I started to get involved in TVET. And I understand it to be someone who basically installs, maintains, dismantles and repairs machinery in factories and power plants. So they really are the person that you need to have in a big factory 
or a big plant who can put the machines up, fix them, move them and make sure that the whole plant runs. So it's an absolutely vital skill and Stunderton has it. And that gives us a first take of the Gertzebande TVET College. College named after a revolutionary figure in the area who fought against terrible farming conditions in Bethel. Caught in a place which has got these enormous power plants with massive coal mining going on to feed the crazy demands for energy in South Africa. Caught within a place which has all the water that we could dream of with major rivers spreading out in all directions from here. But the water being used along with the massive amounts of coal to fill the crazy demands for energy that South Africa has and all of this producing an excellent TVET college which can offer really worthwhile skills because of the industry in the area. 